When I was slightly more beholden to the Irish nationalist thing than I am now, um, I confess that it, there's still elements of that in my personality, whether I want them to be there or not. Uh, but when I was more sort of consciously and deliberately um, into that whole scene, i.e., uh, I'm proud to be an Irishman type thing, um, I once wanted to uh, get a little shamrock tattooed right there. Looking at that now, um, let's say that for whatever reason that we didn't have the same technologies for tattoo removal that we now have, I think that would have been the biggest mistake of my life, um, walking around with a tattoo on my hand like that. Um, especially since my position on Irish nationalism has changed considerably, almost to the point where it's not even recognizable uh, compared to uh, what it was when I wanted that tattoo. Um, and even then, when I wanted to get the tattoo, I was what what one might call an extremely soft nationalist. In other words, I loved the idea of being Irish. I loved celebrating my Irishness and everything like that. Um, uh, but I was in no way uh, politicized by it. But even now, it's, uh, it's much different from that. Now, I think that all isms um, work that way. They work the same way as uh, that one-time take on nationalism, on my heritage, or what I believed at the time to be my heritage, and that tattoo worked, uh, those two elements. First of all, I worked out an idea in my own head what it meant to be an Irishman, and to me, uh, being Irish meant a certain type of music, a certain type of um, seeing the world, um, uh, a love of poetry, um, a, uh, a <clears throat> hate to say this, a certain... Um, cavalier attitude towards physical violence. Um, this is unfortunately common among the uh, Canadians of Irish extraction that I grew up with. Um, and um, certain other attitudes that generally have more to do with your view of the world than any politics. I've never really uh, believed in the political side of it at all. Not many of my friends ever did either. Um, and I wanted to sort of sort of remind everyone and myself of my Irishness, because that was just something that I thought was worth celebrating, worth promoting onto the world. In no way did I actually believe that Irish people were better, but I believe that I as an individual had some little extra in being Irish that other people didn't have, but they might have in terms of their own culture. Um, it, it's an interesting sort of multicultural kind of nationalism, I guess. Um, but it is essentially pigeonholing oneself, however seemingly innocuous it is. And the way uh, that I would pigeonhole myself in this case, in this example, would be to tattoo my hand. Now, <laughs> tattooing one's hand is not a good idea, if you ask me, because, uh, well, it pigeonholes you in other ways as well. Uh, here in Canada, uh, either you're an ex-soldier, unlikely, or an ex-criminal, far more likely, or an ex-con, rather, an ex uh, uh prisoner. Um, and you'd have an awful lot of explaining to do all the time. And if I still had that tattoo at the age of 48 now, I would be beholden to whatever that Irishness was that I subscribed to at the time that I had the tattoo applied to myself. In a sense, my Irishness has evolved. Um, and it may evolve. It may have evolved to the point where it's no longer recognizable. Uh, and if if I somehow had some means of presenting it to the young man who wanted the tattoo, he would have said, "What the heck does that have to do with being Irish? It's nothing to do with any of that." Um, you know, it's uh, the, the the drinking is gone, the fighting is gone, the uh, the, the, the all that kind of thing is. Uh, you know, it, it's just not part of the picture anymore. The devil may care attitude, etc. Um, what, what, it, what, what's left? That's Irish, whatever. Well, okay, I, I don't know, but for whatever reason, and a lot of people of Irish extraction will tell you this: it's not it, the, the heritage is not an easy thing to completely slip. Um, however much you might want to, there's there's still enough 
thought in there in your mind that it's pretty darn cool to be an Irishman, and I, I want to hang on to that. Whatever, that. whatever that means, it may essentially be meaningless now, but you want that extra little bit of oomph in your character. Um, it's a subconscious thing. Um, now, luckily, because I don't have, I never really applied any uh, stamps to myself in the form of that tattoo. I <clears throat> uh, never really had my position ossify. My si my sense of Irishness has been allowed to evolve and will continue to evolve for the rest of my life. I will never have a certain canon as to what conscious uh, constitutes rather. Irishness. It'll be in a constant state of um, constant state of revisitation, I suppose, and um, evolution. Uh, it'll never actually mean one particular thing. Um, a lot of sort of, I, I guess you'd call them nationalisms, work that way, and provided they don't ossify into some kind of knee-jerk, tub-thumping, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, team-based um, uh, or uh, nationalistic, I guess, nationalism, uh, tribalism. Uh, it's actually not as negative a thing as one might think, this business of nationalism. If, if nothing else, it makes you comfortable in who you are. It makes you feel good. Oh, yeah, I feel good about who I am. That's the good side of, of having an ism attached to yourself. The bad side is, is that you get stuck in this rut of belief where you're blinkered by... The uh, the furrow you've uh, you've harrowed or whatever you call it uh, the, uh, the the furrow you've plowed and you've gone into this sort of rut and you can't see beyond that furrow that you're now marching in. Uh, there's two sides to everything. Um, nationalism is not necessarily a bad thing, but look what nationalism has brought about in this world. Well, two gigantic world wars for one thing. Um, and look what an excess of nationalism has done to the land of my fathers. Ireland has uh, what uh, you know. It was explained to me the way that you know, Ireland was referred to when I was growing up: the land of your fathers, etc. Nationalism has kind of been rather brutal uh, in its application in Ireland. So, I think that your ideas have to remain fluid, and in order for your ideas and positions to remain fluid, you have to avoid. Um, subscribing to titles. You have to avoid subscribing to anything that can be defined because the second you define it, you distort it. The second you define it, you kill it in a sense. Uh, because you're now, instead of actually leading your ism around, it's now leading you around. Um, I, that's why I can't subscribe to atheism. It, it, it seems to, to have an atheistic sort of title at attached to myself um, seems to sort of box me in, in terms of any options that I've got out there. Now, I'm not saying that this happens to everybody, but it seems to have that effect on my mind. And I don't want that. I want always to have my options open. Because <clears throat> the information that I'm dealing with is incomplete all the time. So I have to always on a dime, as it were, be prepared to um, to completely change my position in the light of new information as it arises. That's a confusing point of view uh, to cultivate, because in a sense you're sort of robbing yourself of the normal points of reference, i.e. The, the piece of litmus paper that we've got called an ism, which allows us to see things and slot everything into our view of the world. You're kind of, to sort of keep your options open at all time, you're sort of robbing yourself of that litmus paper, that piece of, um, that piece of paper that allows you to, uh, you apply it to every situation, every new idea as it comes along against that um, set of precepts, your ism, that allows you to make sense of it. Some people, when they look at that, say that that's solipsism, but I would say it's exactly the opposite. The solipsist says nothing, uh, possibly nothing that I imagine is real. My point of view <laughs> almost says nothing is unreal. <laughs> um, so, we always have to be able to change our position as 
more facts, more reality comes at us. We've never got enough reality to see the whole picture. Um, and if we box ourselves in by an ism, we're applying that tattoo. We're making ourselves a prisoner of the ism, and we're also making ourselves a prisoner of the person who accepted that ism at some point in the past. When I'm simply not the same person as that young man who wanted to sort of ossify his Irishness in his late teens and early twenties. In many ways I am the same kind of guy. I'm the same, I guess, I that was in there, the same spectator, or the same point of view that was there at the time. But many other things have come and gone since that have changed that ism that to a certain extent is still inside of me and inherent in me um, to the point where it's no longer recognizable. It's better not to have an anchor like that. It's better not to have, in my opinion at least, it's better not to have um, something that sticks you in a rut. And an ism will do that. Atheism is no different from any other ism. That's why I can't call myself an atheism, and it doesn't have anything to do with any judgment on that ism itself. I don't think that atheism is wrong. It's simply, this is why I I'm not one, or this is why I don't find that title comfortable when applied to me. Thank you.